We had just concluded learning about the general properties of a gas. Besides these, a gas has some special properties as well, which are prominently different from solids and liquids. Let's now discuss and learn these special properties. A gas is comprised of very tiny particles. These particles are called molecules. The distance between these molecules is greater in gas than in solids and liquids. The force of attraction between the molecules of a gas is negligible. Gas molecules collide with other molecules as well as with their inner walls of the container. The gas molecules occupy the entire space of the container, that is, the entire volume of the container. Gas molecules are light in weight. Let us now find out one of the property of gas. Take two balloons of equal size and blow air into them till they expand to their maximum capacity. Now, take a straight, long stick of about 1 meter length. Tie a string at the center of the stick and hang it. Now, tie the two balloons on the two ends of the stick such that they are equal distance from the center. What do you observe? The sticks stand horizontally. Now, take a pin and carefully pierce into one of the balloons. What do you observe now? The pierced balloon pumps out the air inside it. At the same time, the end of the stick with inflated balloon moves down gradually. What do you conclude based on these observations? From the observations in the activity, we conclude that gases possess weight. Now tell me, what do you experience when you travel on a bicycle against the wind? You are forced to pedal hard to move in your direction, isn't it? On the other hand, how do you feel when you travel in the direction of wind? You move forward without much effort. What do you understand by this? It shows that gases exert pressure. Look at this activity and analyze what it talks about. You observe that the balloon bulges in all directions. What do you understand from this activity? You understand that gases spread all over the available space and gases exert pressure in all the directions. They occupy the available volume of space. Gases take the shape of the container in which they are filled. You have learnt earlier that one of the measurable properties of a gas is pressure. How do we measure pressure of a gas? Is there any device for it? Yes! The device primarily used to measure the pressure exerted by a gas is known as barometer. Let me tell you an interesting fact here. You too can construct a barometer. Do you want to know how to do this? Then come on, I'll show you how to do it. Take a glass reservoir and fill two-thirds of it with mercury. Now, take a glass tube with a narrow bore that is closed at one end. The length of the tube should be about 100 centimeters. Fill the tube completely with mercury. Invert the tube gently into the reservoir. You can observe that after inversion, an empty space is created in the tube. Now, measure the length of the mercury column in the tube starting from the upper mercury level of the reservoir. The length of mercury column gives the pressure exerted by air. You have observed that the length of mercury column is 76 centimeters under normal condition. What does it imply? It shows that under normal conditions of temperature, the pressure exerted by air is 76 centimeters or 
760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. Pressure is expressed in terms of atmospheres. Let's now look at the various units of pressure and the relation between them. Units of pressure. One atmosphere is equal to 76 centimeters of mercury. One atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. One atmosphere is equal to one tar. Let me tell you an interesting fact now. Pressure on the mountain tops and hill stations is usually less when compared to that at the sea level. This is because the pressure gradually decreases with increase in altitude. Hope you all know that several elements are present in the form of gases in nature. Can you name some of them? I shall tell you. Elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium, neon, krypton, chlorine, etc. are gases by nature. Not only these elements, even certain compounds exist in gaseous state. Can you name some of them? Yes. Compounds such as CO2, CO, NO2, NO, CH4, etc. are gases. Irrespective of being an element or compound, all gases exert pressure. The pressure exerted by any gas can be measured by an advanced device known as manometer. This is also called as a modified barometer. Let's now look at the structure of a manometer. Manometer is a U-shaped glass tube with two limbs, one short limb and one long limb. It is always filled with mercury. The longer limb is calibrated to read the pressure. Shall we see how it is used to measure pressure? First of all, note the reading of mercury level on the longer limb. Let the initial length be noted L1 centimeters. Now connect the U tube to a gas cylinder. The gas exerts pressure on the mercury level in short limb as a result of which the mercury level on the longer limb increases. Now measure the length of the mercury level in the longer limb. Let the length measured be L2. The pressure exerted by the gas can be obtained by taking the difference in the mercury level before and after the U-tube is attached to gas cylinder. Thus, the pressure exerted by the gas P is equal to L2 minus L1 centimeters, where L1 is equal to mercury level before connecting to gas cylinder and L2 is equal to mercury level after connecting to a gas cylinder. Another important property of gases is that they are compressible. Now tell me what is compressibility? Thinking? Let's do an activity to understand this concept. Take a glass cylinder partly filled with air. It is closed with a frictionless and leak-proof piston. The space in the cylinder up to the piston level is the volume occupied by some quantity of gas. Now place some weight on the piston such that the piston is pushed inside. What do you observe? The piston goes down and the volume occupied up to piston decreases though the quantity of gas is constant. Now keep on increasing the weights on the piston. What do you observe? You observe that volume of the same quantity of air decreases. What do you conclude by these observations? We can say that the volume of the same quantity of gas decreases by increase in pressure. This phenomenon is called compressibility. Thus, we can now say that gases are compressible. 
Let me ask you a few questions now. When you light some incense sticks and place them in any corner of a room, you smell a nice fragrance all over the room after some time. Why is it so? If you spray a room freshener perfume in some corner of the room, then the fragrance spreads over the entire room. How is it possible? You might have come across such instances. This phenomenon is observed due to the unique property of gases called diffusion. What is diffusion? The intermixing of the gas molecules with the air molecules and then spreading into and occupying the entire available space is called diffusion. Isn't it interesting? Yes. 